the Cheryl with the Cut at Home Design Team. Today I'm going to show you the basics of how to put together a concertina book. It's a book that looks a little harder than it actually is. Look at the fun folds here. But it's actually quite, quite easy. Here this is a very small one done on a double-sided pattern paper. So um, most of the ones that I make are a little bit bigger. This is actually the size that I typically use. This is cut paper cut 8x8, eight eight, but we're going to look at the small one because it fits in the camera better. So you're going to start out with three pieces of 6x6 six six paper. It should be double-sided paper, either a solid or a nice pattern. You have to watch directional patterns and be careful of how that plays out because, again, you've got two sides of your book showing. So you have to be mindful that everything's going at least in the right, in the same direction. Be wary of one-sided paper. It's very, very difficult to work with. So once you've got your three sheets of, of paper cut, six by six, again, for this size, you need to score it. Um, now, you score along these lines. So you're going to score the center, you're going to score the center, and you're going to score one diagonal. You don't score the second diagonal. So what you end up with is three pieces of paper that look kind of like this. This I've already folded a bit. So I've got two squares, two sets of triangles on each of my papers. And I'm ready to assemble my concertina book. Folding in advance makes it just a little bit easier for you to see what you're doing, especially on a pattern like this. Really hard to see a score line. You want to be careful with those score lines on your pattern paper because if you score too deep, you're going to end up with white lines. And I'm going to show you that in a book in just a moment. So I'm just going to lay some pieces of the Angel Craft adhesive around the bottom square on this piece of paper. Again, remember from what we saw before, you've got this paper that's scored this way. So I'm working in this bottom square here. And I'm going to remove that liner tape, set it aside. I guess I better make sure my tape's adhered first. And then I'm going to grab another sheet of paper. Again, I want the square. I don't want the diagonal. So I'm going to quickly figure out where I'm at. I'm going to lay this very carefully next to the score line, but not on top of the score line. If I'm on top of the score line, it's very hard for the book to fold properly. So now I've got two sheets placed together. I need to add the third. So I just need some little pieces of the Angel Cross adhesive. What have I done with it here? <laughs> Made things really impossible. I know that you can tear it. I'm just the world's worst at tearing this stuff. So I like to cut it. It just makes my life easier. Um, typically I use a little bit more tape than this. I'm trying to be quick for purposes of the video. Of course, when you're assembling the book, you want to do it right. When you put this much time and effort into something, you want it to stay together and you want no problems with it. The last little liner doesn't want to come up. There we go. Again, I'm going to make sure I've got a square. I'm going to make sure I know where those score lines are. And I'm going to lay this right next to it, but not on top of it. Just like that. Now, I've already folded the paper in one direction. What I want to do is go back through and fold all the folds in the other direction. This makes my little book a little bit more pliable. Just a very quick process. If you've scored well and scored properly, the folding is very, very easy part. Um, you won't see too many white lines or cracks. I'm going to show you on a little bit larger book how that happens. So now my book's ready to fold. I'm going to start with the first square, and I'm going to fold the triangles behind it, just like that. And I'm going to keep folding square to square, keep folding the triangles in, just like that. And here we go, there's the last one. Fold those triangle pieces in. I'm going to lay the entire book down, press those creases in really good. You can see I didn't get my papers on quite so straight for this version, but there's my concertina book. It's that easy. Um, now this was my little petite version with the 6x6 six six papers. Um, to decorate it for the 6x6, six six, first of all I want to make covers for it. The covers are cut a quarter inch larger than the squares, 
with a six by six piece of paper, your square is three by three. So this is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. It gives a nice little tiny overhang there um, on either side. I'm gonna cover these with paper, whatever paper I choose. It could be a solid, it could be a contrasting pattern, whatever I like. Um, and then adhere those. You'll see um, examples of decorated concertina books in my blog post, so please go and look at that. Now let me show you the oopses that can happen. This is a larger book. This is actually made with 8x8 paper. But you can see here my score lines went a little too deeply and I cracked the paper. So you want to score well, but score lightly. You need to score well enough so that you can fold. Score lightly enough so that you don't crack your paper, essentially is what's going on. Um, so again, refer back to the blog post. I'll have a picture here of your score lines and everything else. But concertina books, very, very easy to do. Very fun. Um, imagine it decorated for the holidays. It's going to be great. Thanks for watching. Bye.